Hi, this is Tom Does Tech. I'm Tom, and welcome to the ultimate guide on TypeScript with Mongoose. Roll the intro. I'm kidding, there's no intros around here. Let's get straight to the content. So I've already made a video on TypeScript with Mongoose before, but this video is going to be more in depth and is also going to include the service layer and testing the service layer. So what does this video cover? This video is going to cover typing custom properties on Mongoose models, typing virtual methods on Mongoose models, typing methods on Mongoose models, typing Mongoose operations at the service layer, and testing the services with Jest. So what does this video not cover? Anything above the service layer? So you can see here that you may have controllers using your service, you have, may have resolvers, and you may have a publisher consumer using our service. We're not going to cover that. It's not going to cover how to use Mongoose, and it's not going to cover creating a Mongoose model. So who is this video for? Those already familiar with Mongoose and TypeScript, those converting a project to TypeScript, and those looking to get more out of their existing Mongoose TypeScript integration. Let's take a quick look at what it is that we're going to be building. So we're going to have this Mongoose model and we're going to type this Mongoose model with our custom properties. You can see this interface here and this interface here. We're going to type our virtual methods and we're going to create a pre-save middleware on our Mongoose model. And we're going to type this custom method on our model. And then we're going to export our model with our user document. And you can see this is a pretty standard user model that you might find in a lot of applications. Then we're going to move on to our user service. We're going to create a create user method. We're going to create a find user method, a login method that uses our compare password method, and a delete all method for testing. And finally, we're going to move on to our tests. And we're going to test our create user method. Then we're going to test our logging in method. We're going to test our logging in method under a different condition. And then we're going to test our virtual properties. And that will conclude the video. So let's get started with the ultimate guide to Mongoose and TypeScript. So we're over here in our project, and this project here would represent something that is currently JavaScript and is in the process of being converted to TypeScript. So we have our user schema here, and this is a pretty standard schema for a user. And then we have our virtual method here to get our full name. And then we have a pre-save middleware method here. And this middleware is just going to add a hashed password to the user if the user's password is being modified. So that means if the user is registering or if they're updating their password. And then we have a compare password method here that takes a candidate password, runs it through the bcrypt compare method and compares it to the user's current password. And if bcrypt compare finds an error, it's just going to return false. Otherwise it will return true. And then we export our model as default, call it user and pass in our user schema. And then we have a services file for a user model. And if you don't already use a services layer in your application, I'm hoping to make a good argument for you to start doing so. So you can see here that we have a create user method that takes some input and creates a user. We have a find user method that takes a query and it has some options and some default options. And then we have a user login method that takes an email and password. It finds the user and then calls the user.compare method on this. So this function here will just return true or false. And then we have our delete users method. We have some tests. And so we have our user payload defined. And we're going to call delete all users before all tests are run. And then after each test, we're going to delete all users again. And we have what is being tested. And we have under what condition it's being tested. And then we have our assertion. And all of our tests follow this same pattern except for the virtual methods because they are only used under one condition. We have a test setup file. So before all tests are run, we will connect to a Mongoose instance. And then after all tests have run, we're going to disconnect and close our connection. 
So there's two ways you can test Mongoose models. You can either connect to a live database, update the data in the database, and then delete it all, or you can mock Mongoose. So let's get started adding types to our Mongoose model. So the first interface we're going to add is user input. And this is going to include all of our fields that aren't in Mongoose documents. The second interface we're going to add is our user document, and we're going to extend our user input. And we're also going to extend mongoose.document. So this is going to include our full name because full name comes from a virtual and is not included on the input. We're going to include created app and updated app because again, they're not included on the input. Mongoose is responsible for creating these fields. And we're going to include our compare password method. And our compare password method takes one field, a candidate password, and that's a string. And it's going to return a promise that includes a Boolean. For good measure here, I'm going to add an index for our email because if we have a look at our login user, we're finding users by their email address. So the next thing to do is to fix our type errors on our virtual method. So you can see that this has an implicit type of any, and that's because TypeScript doesn't know what this refers to. So we can tell TypeScript what this refers to by typing this in the function parameters. And this is going to be equal to user document. And you can see now that first name is actually a property on our user document. So we can do the same thing for our pre-saved middleware. So we can type next as mongoose.next hook next function. And then we can add this as a property. And this again is going to refer to user document. And you can see that this is now typed as user document. Our candidate password is just going to be a string. And we're going to return a promise. And our promise is going to be a Boolean. And you can see that this here matches the type that we put in our user document for compare password. And we can also type user here as user document. And before we export our model with our user document, let's take a quick look at the problem that we're trying to solve. So if we come over to our service and we type user dot, you can see that it knows that it's a mongoose model, but it doesn't have any of our custom properties on here, such as email or first name, or even our full name. We come back to the model. And we can see what we need to pass in here by command or control clicking on the model. And you can see that it's default to T extends document. And so that's how we get all these properties on the document, such as ID, because they exist on the document in Mongoose. And so we can pass our own version of T in here as long as it extends document. Let's pass that in like this. And this here is called a generic type. And you'll see generic types are often typed with things like T or U. And if we come back to our service, we can see that user now has our first name, has last name, and it even has our full name. So that completes the typings for the Mongoose model. Let's come over to the service and we can start typing all this input here. So we know that create takes some input. And if we command click on that again, we can see that it has a T create and it takes this create query. And the create query is a generic that takes our T create. So by default, this will just be a document. But again, we can type this as our user document. So we'll type this as a create query. And the create query is a generic that takes our user document. And you can see all the properties here that our create property now accepts. And we can do the same with our find user method. So if we command click on find user, you can see that it takes a filter query that again is a generic. So we know that we can use filter query here. And we can pass in our user document. And if we want to see what the types for options are, we can Again, command click on the function. And we can see here that options is query find by base options. We can copy that. We can import it from Mongoose and we can add that property here.
So if you're not seeing these properties come from your Mongoose import, you need to install the definitely typed package for Mongoose. So you can do that with yarn add at types slash Mongoose and save that as a development dependency. So moving on to our login user. So we're only going to accept an email and password here. So let's type that as an object. So we can type email and that's going to be a string. And again, password is going to be a string. And this is a nice way of doing it. But if you wanted to get a little bit more specific, email isn't just a string. It's actually an email from the user document. So we can say user document, and then it's going to be our email. And this is going to tell other developers where this email property comes from. And it may be pretty obvious with something like a user, but you may have properties that have names that are shared across multiple schemas. And we can do the same with password. And you can see that this is all typed now because our compare password method is on our user document. And lastly, we have our delete all users that is used for testing. So let's move on to creating our tests. So the first test is for creating a user. And given that the input is valid, it should create a new user. So we can say const user equals await, and we have our create user method that we've imported from our user service. And if we hover over create user, it should tell us what to expect. So it takes input and the input is going to be first name, created at, email, first name, last name, and password. This doesn't really look right because we know that created at and updated at should come from Mongoose. Mongoose is responsible for creating these, not us. So if we go into our create user method, we can change our user document to user input and Mongoose is telling us that there's an error here. So we can tell create that we want to accept user input and this should keep Mongoose happy. If we come back to our test and hover over our properties, you can see that this now looks a lot better. So we're taking an email, first name, last name, and password. And I have a user payload prepared here. So I'm making a few assertions of this. I'm expecting my password to have a length of 60, and that's because I'm expecting the password to get hashed. I'm expecting the user's first name to be equal to our payload's first name, our user's last name to be equal to our payload's last name, and our user's email to be equal to our user's our payload email. So let's run that query. If you're wondering why I have this run button here, it's because I have just test runner plugin installed in my VS code. And you can see that we have one passing test. Let's move on to our second test where we're going to test our log user in method. And given that the password is correct, it should return true. So again, let's create a user and we can use our create user method. We can say const is valid equals user dot so equals await login user and we're going to pass in our email which is going to be user dot email and our password is going to be user dot password and we're going to expect is valid to be truthy. Let's run this test and you can see that our test is failing and that's because we're passing in the hashed password, but we're going to compare this password. So the password should actually be user payload dot password. If we run this test again, you can see that our test is now passing. And then we're going to test it under a different condition. Given that the password is wrong, it should throw, but shouldn't throw. It should just return false. So let's copy this code here. And we're going to change the password to something that we know is wrong. And we're going to change this to should expect is valid to be falsy. Run that test and we get another passing test. One thing to note here is that if you forget to await this login user, we can run this. We're going to see that is valid is actually true is truthy, not true. And so this test should now fail. And that's because is valid is actually equal to a promise and not the result of the promise. So you need to make sure you await this. Otherwise, if you use this method here, every single password in your application could possibly be correct. So let's move on to our virtual property. So again, we're going to create a user. 
we're going to find our newly created user. And to do that, we're going to use our find user method. And we're going to pass in a email address and that is going to be our user payload dot email. And then we're going to expect user dot full name to be a concatenation of our first name and last name. And if we run this test, it will fail and it will fail for a very specific reason. And we'll need to dive into our find user method to see why. So you can see here that our test is no longer passing. And if we look in our find user method, you can see that in our default options, we're calling lean true. The find user is not actually a property on our Mongoose model. It's actually a virtual property, which means that if we call lean, the property won't exist on the object. So we need to pass in a option here that says lean is false. And you can see because we type those options, we get some good helpful hints here. And now if we run this test, you can see that we get a passing test. And if we run all of our tests together, we should see them all pass together. And you can see all of our tests here have actually passed. And that is the ultimate guide to TypeScript with Mongoose. Please make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching.